Green World Edu Universe IELTS Presence Listening Practice Test. Test two. In the IELTS test, you hear some recordings and you have to answer questions on them. You have time to read the instructions and questions and check your work. All recordings are played only once. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a telephone conversation between a man and a woman. Discussing a hotel reservation. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Sunrise Hotel. Good morning, Barbara speaking. Hello, my name is John Griffin. I'd like to make a booking for tonight, please. Are there any rooms still available? Yes, there are a few left. What were you wanting? Well, I'm on a business trip, so I only need a single room. Mr. Griffin is on a business trip, so B is the correct answer. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, as the recording is not played twice. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to six. Sunrise Hotel. Good morning, Barbara speaking. Hello, my name is John Griffin. I'd like to make a booking for tonight, please. Are there any rooms still available? Yes, there are a few left. What were you wanting? Well, I'm on a business trip, so I only need a single room. I don't think that will be a problem. Let's look. Yes, there's one single room left. Shall I book it for you? Yes, please. That would be great. Right then. Let me get a pen. So, what's your name again, please? John Griffin. That's J O H N G R I F F I N. Okay, I've got that down. Wait a minute. You've been here before, haven't you? Yes, that's right. I stayed with you twice before. Well, we should have your details already. Let's look at the cards. Here we are. So, John Griffin from Sydney, right? Yes, that's right. So, tell me if I'm wrong. John Griffin, passport number eight seven six three seven four eight nine, age thirty. Yes, that's right. So, it's a single room for two nights. Is your credit card number the same to confirm the booking? Yes, it's the same. But I want you to forward the bill to my company again, if that's okay. Oh yes, Mr. Griffin, that's no problem at all. Your company have always settled very promptly in the past. And what time can we expect you tonight, Mr. Griffin? Well, the plane lands at nine fifteen p.m. So by the time I get through the formalities, that should take about twenty minutes. I should be at your place at ten. Will the restaurant still be open at that time? As I'll be hungry. I hate plain food. I'm afraid it'll be closed by then, Mr. Griffin. Can I organise some snacks to be left in your room? A burger, fries, sandwiches. Yes, that would be great. How about a cheese sandwich with fries? No problem, sir. I'll see to that. Oh, the fries might be cold when you get in. Ah, yes. Just the sandwich then. No problem. Anything else, Mr. Griffin? No, that's all. Thank you. See you tonight. See you tonight, Mr. Griffin. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now you will hear a conversation between Barbara and another man, Mark. Before you hear this, you have some time to look at questions seven to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions seven to ten. Oh, Mark, that was Mr. Griffin. You know that nice man from Sydney who's been here a couple of times before. He's booked a single room for two nights from tonight. Oh, good. Wait a moment. Um, which room have you put him in? Uh, I put him in number twenty-two. Is that okay? I think so. Let me just check. Oh, blast! There was a booking earlier this morning. All the singles are now gone. 
Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I didn't realise. Don't worry, it's not a problem. We'll stick him in number 34. It's a double room, but it shouldn't matter. What about the price? The double is $150 a night, and he's going to be expecting $100 a night for the single. Well, we don't want to upset him. We want him to come back. Make a note that we'll give him the single rate, and that he's got a free upgrade. I'm so sorry, Mark. I should have let him know that there weren't any singles left. No, it's not your fault. I took the booking earlier, but the computers were down. I should have made a note of the booking so that everyone knew. It's my fault. Mr Griffin has ordered a cheese sandwich to be left in his room too, as the restaurant will be closed when he gets in. That's no problem. Just leave a message for my wife in the order book there. She'll make sure that it's prepared by the kitchen staff and then room service can take it to his room just before he arrives. How much shall I charge him for the sandwich? What is it again? Ah yes, cheese. Um, well, beef and chicken are both $10 and salad is $8. Just make it $9. That should be OK. OK. Thanks, Mark. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a news broadcast on a radio station. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully to the news broadcast and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning and welcome to 2RC, your local radio news service for the Wesley area. And here are your headlines for this morning. More news from the police into the jewellery robbery that occurred last Tuesday in the centre of town. Comtech, the local computer hardware manufacturer, has announced that it must cut 40 jobs. New routes open up at the Wesley International Airport. Plans for the redevelopment of the Oakley Woods have been shelved. A local cricket team make it to the regional finals. And get set for a heat wave. First of all, police have released two descriptions for the two men wanted in connection with the robbery at the local jewellery store, Nichols, in the centre of town last Tuesday. At 9am, just when the store was opening, two men burst through the door and demanded bags to be filled up with jewellery. Although the two men were armed with baseball bats, the shopkeepers bravely attacked them and beat them off. Although the two men had motorcycle helmets on, these were knocked off during the scuffle, and the shopkeepers were able to get a good look at them. The first man is said to be about six foot in height, slight build, dark hair and a small moustache. He was wearing blue jeans, a white t-shirt and a black leather jacket. The second man is much shorter, around 5 foot 8, with a fat build and red hair and clean shaven. He was wearing a dark blue sweater and black jeans. They are both probably in their early 20s. The police hope to issue photo fit pictures later today. The public are urged to call Wesley Police if they think they recognise either of the two men. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the news broadcast and answer questions 16 to 20. Comtech last night announced that they must release 40 workers. This was blamed on a downturn in sales and increased competition. 
The jobs to be lost will be a mixture of early retirement offerings and a spread from all departments in the company. Westley International Airport has been awarded by Cheap Air, the new low-cost carrier, four new routes into Europe. The new routes will be into four European countries, though the details have not yet been released. When the deals have been finalised, this will lead to a significant number of jobs. Environmentalists were delighted this morning by the news that plans by the local council to develop the Oakley Woods area have been shelved. The woods were to have been developed into a shopping area, but opposition from local residents and local environmental groups has led to a turnaround by the local council and they will now look for an alternative site. Westley Green, a local pressure group, says they are ecstatic that the council has bowed to the wishes of people in the area. Mr George Finchley, Mayor of Westley, made the announcement and said that the committee responsible took all available information into account before taking the decision and he hopes that Westley residents are happy that the local council are sensitive to their wishes when making decisions. East Moors CC, a local league cricket club, has made it to the finals of the Sunday League knockout cricket competition. They will play the final at home on Sunday 30th of August against Newbury CC. Go along and support if you are around that day, as you'll be assured a great Sunday afternoon sport. And finally, get set for a heat wave for the remainder of the month of August. Weather experts have assured us that we will have three weeks of unbroken sunshine till the end of the month. Great news, but those of us who are experienced with the British weather will most likely greet this news with, let's wait and see. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear an admissions tutor at a university interviewing a prospective student. First you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello there, it's Robert Johnson, isn't it? Yes, that's right. First of all, thanks for coming to this interview and thanks for applying to the engineering department of Westley University. This is a fairly informal interview where I just get to know you and find out what kind of person you are. There won't be any technical questions as we've got all your educational background from your application form. Oh, that's good. Now, I know you've applied to us to study civil engineering, so can you tell me why you chose this field? It's a mixture of reasons, really. First of all, I've always been fascinated by building things. Whenever the family was on the holiday, I would always be interested in the local bridge and all that. My father is a civil engineer too, so he'd always be able to explain things. And it was he, I suppose, who really fostered my interest. I'm lucky as well, because my best subjects at school were maths and physics, which are the ones that are particularly used for engineering. So you'll be keeping it in the family then? Yes, my brother wants to do the same thing as well, so you'll probably get an application from him in another two years. Great. Now then, I noticed from your application form that you took a year off between school and university. What did you do during this year? Well, I'd like to say I got plenty of work experience, but what I did was travel. I went to Australia for the year and spent the time travelling and working all around the country. At the end I went to New Zealand and travelled around there for a couple of months. What kind of work did you do out there? It was fairly menial stuff. I delivered furniture, worked in a pub, worked in a hotel and worked on a building site for a couple of months too. 
Working on a building site must have been good experience for engineering. I suppose so. I mean, it was interesting to see the brass tack side of things. And a good engineer has to get his hands dirty, my father says. He's absolutely right as well. Now, why did you choose Wesley University to study civil engineering? Well, first of all, I know that the department has a very good reputation in this field. And before applying, I checked out the stats and saw the percentage of graduates going straight into industry was very good. Yes, we're very proud of that. I'm also very interested in mountaineering, and your campus here in the Midlands is within reasonable distance of Snowdonia, so I'll be able to go hiking at weekends when work allows. That's good. It's very important for students to have interests outside of their studies. It helps deal with the stress. I also play a lot of football, and the university runs quite a few teams in the local leagues, so I'd like to get into that. You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 27 to 30. Is there anything you'd like to ask me about the course? Yes, the information in the prospectus wasn't very clear about assessment. How will I be assessed over the four years of the course? Well, as it's a sandwich course, you'll be working in industry for the third year and there won't be any exams for that year. In the first year, you'll have exams at the end of May. You'll probably have five papers to sit then. The second year is identical to the first year. You have to pass the exams in these years, but they won't actually be part of your degree. In the fourth year, you'll have to write a dissertation with a minimum of 15,000 words, and most people use their time in the third year, when they're working, to use as a basis for their dissertation. So the third year can be spent doing the hard work for the dissertation, leaving the fourth year to polish it, and study for your finals. What will I have to do for the finals? There will be eight papers in all during June, and these will be based on work done throughout the entire course. It's hard and a stressful time, but students usually cope with it. Anything else? Yes, I'd like to ask. That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a research methods lecture. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this auxiliary lecture on research methods. This lecture is not aimed specifically at one particular course but is a general lecture that will be relevant to any student who must conduct research into a topic for his or her course. For most of you this will be the research that you need to do in order to write your dissertation and theses. It has been said that first world societies are no longer industrial societies, but information societies. That is, our major problems and tasks no longer mainly centre on the production of goods and services necessary for survival and comfort, but rather require a prompt and accurate flow of information on preferences, needs and behaviour. This is why surveys today are regarded with so much importance. What then is a survey? Today, the word survey is used most often to describe a method of gathering information from a sample of individuals. This way, the results can be projected from the sample to the larger population. An important consideration to take at the start is to decide how large a survey to perform. 
Sample size required for a survey partly depends on the statistical quality needed and the size of the total population of the area in question. Even so, there is no simple rule for sample size that can be used for all surveys. Analysts, though, often find that a moderate sample size is sufficient statistically and operationally. A properly selected sample of only 1,000 individuals can reflect various characteristics of the total population, but it is not always needed to sample the entire population for your needs. I'd like now to look at some of the types of survey available to us, and the focus here will be on methods for surveying individuals and companies. Mail, telephone interview, and in-person interview surveys are the most common ways for doing this. The latter can be in offices, homes or on the street. Mail surveys can be relatively low in cost. A decent response rate though is the major problem. Mail surveys can be most effective when directed at particular groups such as subscribers to a specialised magazine or members of a professional association. Telephone interviews are an efficient method of collecting some types of data and are being used increasingly. They lend themselves particularly well to situations where timeliness is a factor and the length of the survey is limited. For students such as you, though, cost will be an issue. In-person interviews in a respondent's home or office are good when complex information is to be collected. It could involve a great deal of travelling around, though. Street interviews could also be useful as they are easy, but the sampling is not very scientific. We also need to look at the content of our surveys. Surveys can focus on opinions and attitudes, or on factual characteristics or behaviour. Many surveys combine types of questions. Questions may be open-ended, such as, why do you feel that way? Or closed, such as, do you approve or disapprove? The questionnaire may be very brief, a few questions, taking five minutes or fewer, or it can be quite long, requiring an hour or more of the respondent's time. Also, because changes in attitudes or behaviour cannot be reliably ascertained from a single interview, some surveys employ a panel design, in which the same respondents are interviewed on two or more occasions. There are also certain ethics to be looked at in conducting surveys. Some of you will see that the information that you will compile is of value to companies operating in that particular sector. Therefore, you must always bear in mind a few guidelines. Surveys should be carried out solely to develop statistical information about a subject. They should not be designed to produce predetermined results or as a ruse for marketing and similar activities. The industry standard for all reputable survey organisations is that individual respondents should never be identified in reporting survey findings. All of the survey's results should be presented in completely anonymous summaries, such as statistical tables and charts. That is the end of section 4. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of listening test 2. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.